Hey guys, this week we're talking about the 1x20 program created by Dr. Michael Yeses. Let's get into it. Dr. Michael Yeses earned a PhD from the University of Southern California. He's a professor, sports performance coach, biomechanist, and author. The program is basically 15 to 25 movements for one set of 20 repetitions each, three days per week. Each movement, you know, the very first day starts around 6 RPE. Then you add 1.5 to 2.5 kilograms each workout until you're reaching failure. The agenda for today, you know, we're going to find out why did he create the 1x20 program. We're going to look at the science behind it, the benefits, adaptations, but we're going to add something a little new. We're going to actually uh, give you some ideas of how to use velocity to monitor progress and regress. Specifics to a, sa a sample program, basically I'm going to give you um, uh, a version that I've written specifically, and then we're going to look at the days per week, the exercises, starting intensities, but this time we're going to look at percentages, RPE, and velocity. Holistic su suggestions for survival, and believe me, it will definitely be survival, because this, this is a lot of work in a short amount of time, but nutrition, re recovery, and who should and who shouldn't perform this. All right. So it's intended for beginners, return to play, and possibly a plateaued athlete who hasn't seen a lot of progress lately. So the key is, is uh, the movement. So we're going to look at the basic athletic movement patterns like squat, hinge, press, row, lunge, and rotation. And we're going to strengthen uh, those movements in all major vectors, lateral, horizontal, vertical, and rotational. Now here's the key is that this whole program is designed for you to get better at those movement patterns. So if at any time there's any degree of like dysfunction, you cut it off, go back, go lighter and start all over. It's not so much about going super heavy as it is getting really good at these movements. And so by doing that, you're going to get some muscular strength and endurance, strong connective tissues, improved circulation, especially to the joints. You're going to avoid injury. And once a base is built with general physical preparedness, that's when you're going to move on to like special exercises, individualized programming, and a focus on the sport um, becomes the priority. Oh, I got to go back. I wanna, this is my man, Ryan Krauser. But before Ryan, he's a gold medalist and world record holder in the shot put. This was him as a youth. So if, to go from this to this, there are stages. General physical preparedness until you get to more specificity. Benefits, hypertrophy and muscular endurance, movement quality and all those movements we talked about, improved circulation to the joints, and then strengthening ligaments and tendons, yes, but it's not maximized, and we'll talk about that more. Once again, here's Ryan when you know he was younger, youth. this was maybe two or three years into our training, uh, this is him now, where he's a monster. <laughs> So tendon strength is maximized at higher intensities. So the um, you know increases in tendon stiffness, you know tighten and collagen and the collagen layer that surrounds muscles. You know a tendon stiffness means that when the muscle contracts, the tendon won't lengthen, versus a loose compliant tendon caused by lightweight um, elongates when muscle contracts. Improved passive force production and elasticity. That's what happens with with tendon stiffness. You know, but simply put, when you're, say you're sprinting and your foot strikes the ground, you know, as soon as your muscle contracts, that tendon is going to add, add some passive uh, force as well, and very quick passive force, which means rate of force development is up. You're going to get a better stretch shortening cycle. So that's good. Now, if you have a weak tendon or tendon that's like more pliable, you know, the muscle contracts and the tendon doesn't move. Therefore, you have a delay in movement. It's maximized at higher intensity. Um, there's a, a, a Mersman F et al. from 2017 found that tendon stiffness was maximized at higher intensities um, by changes of the material properties, elastic modulus, and radial tendon hypertrophy. So uh, this is a quote from him, so I'm going to read it straight out. High intensity loading to the, to the tendon by isometric maximum voluntary contraction and intensities between 80 to 90%. For around five, six to four, with a contraction and relaxation tempo of three seconds each, resting two minutes between sets and perform three times per week for 12 weeks. 
Now, the study was misinterpreted in a few of the articles that, that I read out there, you know, because you know, tendons do require more time than muscles to adapt. But by time, they were talking about the, you know, duration of the time is in reference to the duration of the program being like 12 weeks or even more is better for tendons. It's not in reference to the time of the set, the actual set. As you can see, the, the time of the actual set is not very long. Um, Dr. Keith Barr conferred, uh, confirmed those studies, and um, he had similar similar suggestions. Like, but he actually added plyometrics in reference to drop jumps, maximal bounding, and sprints for improved matrix. So. Now, we're going to use we are going to use velocity to monitor progress uh, to monitor to look at progress progressing the. Um, the program or regressing so if athlete maximizes intent on each individual rep speed strength strength speed accelerative strength and eventually even absolute strength is maximized meaning if we're going to start at a low like uh, six rpe and we're going to progress and we're going to go as hard as we can each rep for 20 reps you're going to go through all those qualities of strength if you're looking you know if you're using velocity to monitor because if i'm using say 45% I could do it slowly if I want I can just survive or I can I can maximize each individual rep and it's going to, you're going to get a lot more adaptations that way so velocity and subjectivity that was evident in all the articles on the web truly avoid failure and possible injury with velocity and uh, we've got some specific targets and cutoffs for you that we'll give to you in the program, which is next. And let me just say, we have all been on Instagram and watched powerlifters and weightlifters talk about, uh, you'll see them do a heavy triple and they'll say seven RPE. And like, it, it took them 10 seconds to do that final rep. And there's no, <laughs> you're not getting another rep, man. It's not seven RPE. So I know I'm not hating on those guys. I would have done the same thing. I'm a boy. We don't even have our prefrontal cortex developed until 25 years old. So how are we going to be objective in, in our subjectivity? <laughs> so here's the program. Three days per week. 20 exercises. Here's the chart uh, of exercises I came up with. There's several out there. Uh, by, by all means, choose, choose different ones if you want. But I'm going to use the belt squat or even maybe a uh, high bar back squat for the squat movement. A trap bar deadlift for the hinge movement. We're going to get bench press for a push, horizontal push that is. A standing military press for a vertical press. And we're going to do a bent over row for a horizontal um, pull row. So you can also, you know, we, we're got in here, we have um, a vertical row as well by doing pull-ups. Uh, you could also do pull-downs, whatever. So we've hit all the major vectors. Uh, we, except rotational, it's going to be really hard to do um a rotational movement for 20 reps it's as hard as you can safely so we're not going to use the velocity for for rotation here but we are going to have rotation in there it's just from the from number six on we, we will use rpe and do our best to um you know be be as objective as we can in our decisions so assisted pull up the kozak squat step ups um you can do a dumbbell or barbell reverse lines or walking lines it, you know it's it's really not as important you know as just pick something and stick with it but i wouldn't change the movements until you know you come to the end of the program because specificity is going to be key here uh, med ball in the range t-spine lift off you can look that up on um uh youtube there's a med ball shot put uh, uh seated dumbbell power cleans that's for external rotation standing toe raises that's going to be for the the front of your lower leg the tibia so and you can those are all over the place now with my man knees over toes but suspension leg curls um we use a trx to do those and then straight uh, a straight leg a uh, single leg banded hip flexion um knee flex like running so you're going to perform knee flexion but your knee is going to be flexed bent aka bent so uh, a straight leg pogo jump is just, um, you know, you're going to be on one leg jumping as high as you can for 20 reps on each leg. So standing calf raises, suspension fallout for the core. Uh, I hate using the core for, for the abdominals. So, but by not, you're not, you're not going to do the, the flexion, but keep, you're going to do the fallout by keeping everything nice and neutral. Sideline, hip abduction, you can use bands if you need to. And then wrist roll-ups. 
So you do those 20 movements and, or 20 of your own, you know, but I just chose those first five to monitor with velocity to keep them safe. So there's bigger movements. I want to keep you as safe as possible. And I want to get as, um, as much, as many adaptations as possible. So now here's the 20 exercises. You're going to five are monitored by velocity, 15 by RPE. Day one intensity is either a six RPE. Let's say you don't have velocity. That's fine. You can do a six RPE uh, or 45% of your one RM. If you know what that is, if you're saying, you're, you're an athlete trying to um, get out of plateau. Uh, 1.09 meters per second for the squat is the starting uh, starting velocity, or 0.8 meters per second in the bench and deadlift, 1.05 in the military press, and 1.16 in the bent over row. Those are the starting velocities. Uh, and over here, um, I used Mike DeSure and the Exodus Strength charts to predict the 20 RM, you know, what is going to be. The, t the true 20 rep max at a 10 RP. And based on their numbers, it's a uh, 0.518, but um, we're going to change that up just a bit and I'll show you. Uh, we're going to progress. Once you start your day one, your intensity, you can pr progress each and every session about 1.5 to 2.5 kilograms on each of the movements. Now, on the bigger movements, 2.5 is probably safe, especially in these first five. But on the smaller movements, there, there's all other ways to progress. You know, you know, wrist roll up. If you do 2.5 each day, that might end quickly. So, you know, go either keep the weight the same, or maybe at that point even increase the rep or increase the difficulty in other ways. So, in the in the pogo jumps, obviously, I guess you could possibly maybe hold. You know 1.5 then you can hold two kilograms if you want to progress it like that or just jump higher each time so and then uh it, it ends at failure if you reach failure that you're done you can either you know just go back and start all over on that movement or when a maximum is reached or in the say in the squat for example once you reach a velocity of 0.87 meters per second on your first you know two or three reps that is when that's the, the end of that um, cut off velocities. Now, this is important, too. So we're going to use velocity in the squat. So once, let's say that on that very first day, you're at 1.09 meters per second, or let's say maybe a few days later or a few weeks later, you know, you, you've added the weight and you're starting at, say, one meter per second and it gets down to 0.4, then we're cutting you off. And that is also going to be where we end the 20 rep max progression. So, uh Bench and deadlift, your cutoffs. It just keeps you safe. Like, I really don't want anyone to reach true failure, especially in the bigger movements, like deadlift, squat, um, even bench press and military press. We want to get as you know, close to failure, but not going overboard. So, military press, 0.4 to 0.5, and then bent a row, 0.7. Now, these are based on my numbers, which you're going to see in a minute. Uh, by all means, you can use your own data, you know, my athletes might be different than yours. That's something you should always consider when you're talking about velocity. My athletes, the data I have, are based on Olympic weightlifters. So they're very fast, you know, powerful, maybe not as like uh, one RM strong as a powerlifter. So uh, except for my power, powerlifters, that is, that is. But a weightlifter shouldn't be able to get to 0.18 meters per second on a squat. If they've done that, the adaptations required is not what we want as weightlifters. So either get your own data or, you know, maybe back it up even more. So cutoff zones used early on in the program. You take the, you know, around week four, you're going to take the glo gloves off and you're going to go until you're getting close to failure. Or maybe you do reach failure on some of the smaller movements. The goal is to, is to run this program around six weeks, but I'm thinking four to six is probably w when it's going to progress. So earlier, I predicted that a 20 rep max would happen around, you know, 52% of your 1RM based on the available data. Based on my experience, there's probably a range between 52 to 60% is what some people could do for a 20 rep max. So it, for my own athletes, I would suggest 57.5%. Uh, remember, the further from a 5RM you get, the less accurate the RPE is. So, you know, going by your own experience or just, you know, talking about to your athletes we're going to go until velocity is x whatever you decide that's fine and here's some numbers for um that i've gathered from my own athletes that you can use to keep things safe to progress it in a, in a safe manner 
Now, once you get to the end and you're reaching failure, you can progress to 1.1 uh, 1 by 15. You can use all these you know, suggestions I've added to start it all over. So, matter of fact, you could like, you know, the here uh, fit like a fifth, 15 rep max at a 10 RPE is around 0.65 meters per second. So you can start all over. Um, you can do the same thing with one by 10. You know, use the same charts and principles, and finally become more. Once you've gone to the one point one by 15 and the one by 10, you know, you can get more specific at that point and go to more traditional periodization whichever one you prescribe, prescribe to, or velocity-based training was what I would recommend. So velocity aids with intent, maximizing the qualities of strength, and maximizes adaptations. Here's some holistic suggestions for survival. It sounds funny, but it's, I mean, this is a brutal program. Is that the nutrition, is, I would definitely want to be in a caloric surplus, not a deficit. So if you're trying to lose weight, this is not the program. Uh, somewhere between 250 to 350 extra calories per day, especially on the days that you're you're performing the uh, the one by 20 program. You know, as far as protein, and here's the only when it comes to the macro nutrients, the one I'm going to suggest that you really focus on is protein. Is you know somewhere between one to three grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. That's based on Dr. Andy Galpin's suggestions, because we definitely want protein synthesis to be more than protein breakdown so we can add some muscle here sleep eight hours is the minimum if you can't get at least eight hours don't do this but I, i'm suggesting what nine to ten hours per night of sleep of quality sleep that is consider maybe ice baths on the days on your days off and sauna on the days that you do the program might help Conclusion, it's a, it's a good program for general physical preparedness, uh, a return to play, and possibly even for a new stimulus to you athletes who are in a rut. Uh, you can use velocity to limit subjectivity, to progress this thing safely, and to maximize adaptations. Uh, as always, man, if, for any, if you have any questions, email me at travis at gymware.com. Here are the references, some of the references I used, and I'll see you next time.